I will ask Andreas Christostomu to come. He's the uh, Chief Mar uh, Strategy Officer for Toto Theo. There you are. So he's going to take us through the technology in 2020 and how this will impact shipping. Andrea, please keep your time. The clock is here. Thank you. Good morning. I'm sure I will give you some minutes extra so you can catch up on your time. Don't worry about that. Uh, I think I have a presentation. Thank you. I don't hear the sound. Thank you. There will be a video on the second slide. I don't know who's running the presentation, but I would like to have the sound as well, because otherwise it's going to be. Thank you. Every time that we're reaching the end of a decade, we're looking on the new one, and we say, what the hell is happening for us? I live the 80s, the 90s, the, the noughties, the 2010s, and now we're going to the 2020s. And if we go back in time, 1920s was a major change in many things, fashion, electronics, um, new machines, new engines, new way of living. Now, the 2020s definitely is the beginning where the digital world will be with us. And in 15 minutes, I will try to give you what, a glimpse of what is coming. And I start first with my first slide, this is a video with the name Closer Than You Think. don't want me to tell you that machines are actually becoming more smart and they are actually becoming even more helpful to us. Every single one of you, I'm 100% sure you hold at least one smartphone. By having that smartphone, you perform mostly of your business. I end up using no computer and laptop the last five years. I'm doing everything from my Samsung or from my iPhone. Does that mean that they are better than me? No, they provide the technologies to me. So I start by saying computers are becoming smarter. Next on our list, we're going to see artificial intelligence. You like it or not, we all know about Google Assistant, we know about Alexa. This artificial intelligence is here to help us. It doesn't mean it's an integrated artificial intelligence at all time, but it will be there to provide intelligence in certain parts. Eventually, by the end of 2020s, I predict, that they will be totally integrated. Whether that will be helpful for the maritime, yes it is, because it's worth noting that the AI also is important for us in the maritime security. I think the previous speaker made it very clear on his slide about the percentages, how uh, maritime security is important and how vulnerable it is. Next on our list, we should like to talk about the industrial IOTs. Internet of Things. Last time I spoke to Capital Links, I spoke about IOPs and our own invention of where the Internet of Ports. Here we're talking about the Internet of Things and you all most probably are aware you have sensors on board the ships, you have sensors which collecting information. Those IOTs, although they do the job today, they're becoming more and more smarter the more data they introduce and more data they analyze. Therefore, the end result of that, the IOT technology will improve dramatically the way we use the deep learning and how we analyze the um, vast majority of data, high volume of data. Autonomous surface vessels, please read the initial line on my slide. I call it a controversial subject, but the reality. When the autonomous Google car came into the market or came into being and it was tested in, in the streets, it was a controversy, but it does exist. Uber is using it. Do we have autonomous surface vessels? We, we know that the IMO have introduced four levels of autonomy. They're different levels of autonomy, but they do exist in a way and they do actually be tested continuously. Whether it's gonna become reality or not, I am not sure yet, but I guarantee you that the A30, A330 of Airbus is already autonomous aircraft, but it has pilots. 
So I would not be surprised seeing autonomous ships running around in the 2020s in certain areas with the captains, of course, and the crew. That's where the controversy comes in. The question arises, is IMO going to be ready to provide the legal aspects of it? They already started on it. We hope they will. And we are, as part of the engineering side, that we, are, we hope that we're going to get all that information on time. Now, another jargon, blockchain. This process technology can revolutionize the supply logistics and cargo trade over maritime routes. I would like to give a pause here. Another relevant application of blockchain will be very relevant to ship registries. As a, my previous life was working with ship registries, I, the more I examine the technology, I do find many uh, ways that it can help the registries running 24-7 and be secure at all times. Augmented reality. Although augmented reality might not be really that everybody of us uses every day, I don't think everybody plays Pokemon or um, Snap, a chat, or whatever you may call it, but I've seen it in real life. You go on a shipyard nowadays and they want to provide you, let's say, a dining room in a, in a cruise ship. They can provide the visual, because that's the next thing we're going to see, uh, the virtual reality. You are in the virtual reality sense. But then you say, okay, I would like to have some flowers on this side, I would like to have this, and I would like to have that. And real people sitting there. So you might have your real people sitting there, augmenting it with different kind of objects. That is not the only thing we're going to use. This is what we started using today. You are going to have augmented reality being part of our life. It's not far away we're going to see that I can do my finger like that, and I can project my phone on the ceiling. The technology exists. It's not available out for, for selling, simply because it is not. Most probably is commercially viable at the moment. But virtual reality, which is the next one that I would like to touch, and augmented reality, they definitely can help us understanding escape routes. For some of us that we worked on ships, and you won't, and especially on passenger ships, or ships that they carry more than 10 or 15 people, you want to have an escape route is the easiest way to use it and explain to people how to do it. They're actually living into it. Now, I'm passionate about it because when I'm sitting on a room like this and someone put a two-dimensional drawing and says the escape route is by doing that, unfortunately, as a naval architect I am, though, I cannot visualize the 3D. I will go and crash on the wall. While I get my virtual reality or even augmented reality together, I will have a 3D livable space to experience that. And the more we accept that this will happen, it will make our life easier, but in the meanwhile, it will make our property, which is our ship, safer and more secure. <coughs> Robotics. Those are with us for many years. Even as a child, I remember robotics. Whether they were real or whether in the movies, we've seen them existing. They do exist in several parts of the world. In, sorry, several industries. They, for example, the car manufacturers, they're using it completely for building cars. We are using it more or less in the shipping build, ship building industry. I mean, in, in my time, I remember we learned how to design for production. And the reason we learned how to design for production, it was to assure that the robotics of that time, they were taking on board our design and it was easier for them to produce it. Of course, the technology then to today, it's much, uh, much more advanced. But because of its controversy, whether the robot will replace the human, it, they haven't actually seen them working with us, at least. We only saw Sophia going to several places and talking to uh, different people on news, uh, releasing new, sh uh, new chat shows in America, but we don't have robotics as such in our uh, daily life. But we do have them in our working life. So I will not object to them to see them assisting our crews, assisting people on shore, doing things that otherwise would have not been done in the same time span. This is the most relevant one that I think it will definitely revolutionize power and propulsion, the new technologies. We try, we strive to reduce carbon dioxide, to reduce the carbon footprint of the industry. On the meanwhile, let's get some money. What it means to reduce your carbon footprint, you squeeze as much as much as possible energy from every single fuel cell, right? So, 
The better your power propulsion is and the more integrated it is with your hull form, the more you gain out of your fuel and the less pollution you produce to the environment if you may consider carbon dioxide a pollutant. But on the meanwhile, as I said, the challenge is titful, is the environmental and the commercial, and the use of machines intelligence, that's what we'll go back to the beginning, we will pay a major role in achieving the MVCH goals. In a in, in, in one to one, one can say what I all have can all together brought us to one of the most important things, the power and the propulsion of the ship, being utilized artificial intelligence, utilize machine language, utilize all the equipment that we have to produce something more powerful and also less costly, less, uh, with, with less cost. In conclusion, I tried in these 15 minutes to give you a presentation to capture the concept of the new technologies coming, which will be relevant to shipping, and most probably they will revolutionize shipping in the 2020s. I tried also to give you the notion of the closer than you think, and I think we have, I have, believe, I believe that I have clearly demonstrated that. So if you have any questions and you want to know more about what you can do with these technologies, please contact us. Our name is Todo Theo Maritime, and we're based in Cyprus. Thank you very much.